Welcome to the Pulse Report. I'm Dr. Shen, a cardiologist specializing in electrophysiology and the director of research and education at Cardiovascular Medicine. Welcome to a day in the life of an electrophysiologist. Today, I want to talk about one of the most common procedures I perform for people with atrial fibrillation, or AFib. The procedure is called pulsed field ablation, or PFA. Many patients hear the word ablation, but aren't sure what it means, what to expect, or how it can help. My goal is to walk you through the procedure before, during, and after, and explain why it matters, supported by the latest research and guidelines. Let's start at the foundation, what pulse field ablation actually is, and why it's different. Your heart has its own electrical wiring system. Normally, those signals keep everything in rhythm. But in AFib, the signals go haywire. The top chambers of your heart, the atria, start quivering instead of squeezing the way they should. That can leave you feeling things like palpitations, being more tired than usual, or short of breath. And if it's left untreated, AFib also raises the risk of stroke and heart failure. One of the main treatment options for AFib is called ablation. Think of it as going straight to the source of the abnormal rhythm and then neutralizing it. The idea is that in AFib, tiny areas in the heart, often around the pulmonary veins, send out electrical signals that disrupt the heart's natural rhythm. Ablation targets those specific areas so they can no longer trigger the problem. The older methods of ablation either use heat, which we call radiofrequency ablation, or a cold, called cryotherapy, to carefully destroy or ablate those small spots of tissue that misfire. Pulsed field ablation, or PFA, is something new. Instead of heat or cold, it uses very short bursts of electricity that only target the heart cells that are causing the misfires. And here's the important part. It leaves the nearby areas, like the esophagus or certain nerves, untouched. Because it's so selective, pulsed field ablation is generally safer and often faster, too. Recent studies including the ADVENT trial published in the New England Journal of Medicine and early PFA registries published in top journals in our field, such as Circulation and the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, all show that PFA is at least as effective as traditional ablation methods. But PFA comes with fewer complications. That's why more and more experts see PFA as an important new option in AFib treatment. Now that we've covered the what, let's move to the how, that is, what to expect before and during your procedure. Before the procedure, we'll review your medications, manage your blood thinner, and sometimes perform an imaging test to check for clots. On the day of the procedure, you'll meet the care team, nurses, anesthesiologists, and doctors. You'll be given sedation or anesthesia so you're comfortable. For the procedure, we insert thin catheters through a vein in your leg and guide them into the heart. Using advanced mapping like a GPS for the heart, we can identify where the abnormal signals start and then deliver pulsed electrical fields to stop them. The whole process typically takes about one to two hours. You can think of it like repairing a faulty circuit. Instead of rewiring the whole system, we shut off just the tiny switches that are misfiring so the rest of the heart's electrical flow runs smoothly again. So, why does all of this matter? For many people, ablation can feel like a turning point. Picture this, you're jolted awake in the middle of the night, your heart racing out of control. Without proper treatment, you are stuck with a constant worry of when it might happen again. With pulsed field ablation, many patients of mine start to notice relief. Their heartbeat begins to steady, their energy can improve, and everyday activities like walking, climbing stairs, or simply sleeping through the night often become easier again. It's not just about symptom relief, though. The East AF Net 4 trial and the early AF trial, published in the New England Journal of Medicine, show that early rhythm control, including ablation, can reduce hospitalizations and long-term complications compared to medications alone. This means that compared to relying on medications alone, Patients who start rhythm control sooner with strategies such as ablation may have fewer hospital visits and a lower risk of long-term complications. Another important study, the Cabana trial, 
published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, show that ablation can give patients a better quality of life and more stable heart rhythms compared with medications, though it did not increase overall survival. That said, ablation is not always a permanent cure. Why? Let's revisit the idea of a faulty circuit. We can shut down the wires that are sparking out of place, but sometimes new faulty connections forming other parts of the circuit, or the original short circuits reconnect and start misfiring again. Similarly, ablation can remove the cells that are misfiring, but over time, new triggers can form in other areas of the heart, or the original problem spots can reconnect and start firing again. That means AFib can return in some patients, and sometimes a repeat procedure or medications are still needed. The 2023 American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association guidelines for the management of atrial fibrillation emphasize that ablation is a strong option for rhythm control, but outcomes vary depending on the person's heart health, health conditions, and risk factors. As an electrophysiologist, what stands out to me about pulse field ablation is the step forward in safety and precision it represents. Because it selectively affects heart tissue while sparing nearby structures, published studies suggest it carries a lower risk of complications such as esophageal injury or phrenic nerve damage compared with older technologies. In practice, I use ablation not only to help restore rhythm, but also to improve quality of life. After the procedure, we carefully monitor patients with EKGs, and when needed, longer-term rhythm monitors to evaluate whether the heart is maintaining a steadier beat. But ablation is just one tool. For some, medications or lifestyle changes may be enough. For others, especially those with symptoms affecting daily life, ablation, and now PFA, specifically offers a safe and effective option. That's why shared decision-making is so important. Your doctor can help weigh the evidence with your personal goals in mind. And let's not forget, every ablation involves a person, not just a rhythm problem. I've cared for patients who were once winded by a short walk and later regained the stamina to travel. I've seen grandparents who used to sit on the sidelines now able to keep up with their grandchildren without the constant worry of their heart slipping back into chaos. Behind the equipment and ECG tracings are people with goals, responsibilities, and families. When clinically indicated, PFA can translate into better rhythm control and more typical day-to-day -day function. After all, medicine is all about giving people back the moments that matter most. To close, let's have a summary and some practical next steps if you're considering PFA. PFA is a precise, tissue-selective ablation method to treat AFib that builds on decades of research. Studies and major trials show that ablation often provides better rhythm control than medications, and PFA is emerging as a safe, more targeted option. If you or someone you love has AFib, talk with your cardiologist about all the treatment options and ask whether PFA could be right for you. Thank you for listening to The Pulse Report. I'm Dr. Shen. Remember, when your heart is in rhythm, your life is in rhythm too. So let's keep your heart and your life going strong and in rhythm.